Hi guys, today we're going to be harvesting this golden midget watermelon that I have grown in a container. But first, I want to show you some of the other watermelons growing in containers and in the ground in my garden. Just a couple of weeks ago, I made a sling for this watermelon. The sling is sitting here. I pulled it out of the sling because it doesn't need it. It's really big. It's all the way down here sitting on the ground, so it doesn't need the support. This variety is Alibaba. I think this watermelon's gonna be pretty big for a container watermelon. I'm excited to harvest it, but it's not quite ready yet. This is the golden midget watermelon that I have grown in a container. I think that it is getting close to being ripe. This variety starts off green and also turns yellow after it's ripened. You guys might remember in a previous video that I said last time I grew this variety, it seemed very prone to fungal disease and that still holds true. The leaves look pretty funky here, lots of brown, little spots all over the leaves. It's normal for the leaves of this variety to turn somewhat yellow, as is it for the other yellow variety. I'm just finding that both of these varieties are a little bit prone to fungal disease. If you live somewhere where it's not really humid, you probably don't have to worry too much about fungal disease. Alibaba, on the other hand, does really well. It does get a little bit of fungal disease, but look how great this plant looks compared to the other two plants. I highly recommend Alibaba. It's a very reliable variety. It does good, so good for me every time I plant it. Really quick before we harvest that watermelon, I want to show you some of the watermelons that are growing in the ground in my garden. I can't show them all to you because I can't trample all over my vines, but I'll show you some of the watermelons that are growing around the edges of the watermelon patch so I don't have to walk all over my vines. Here's one. I think, I'm not sure, this might be Congo. This one is Blacktail Mountain. Another Alibaba. This one is Moon and Stars. And right back here, hiding under some zinnias, is a Klondike Stripe Blue Ribbon Watermelon, and this is probably my favorite watermelon of all time. The days to maturity on this variety is 65 to 70 days. This has been in here 64 days. I think it's ripe. This watermelon was green. This variety turns a golden yellow color when it's ready. The tendril is mostly dead. I honestly thought I was gonna lose this watermelon because there was this green caterpillar crawling all over this thing and it ate this outermost layer of skin off of here and it was really going to town on the watermelon but it seems to be fine that was a couple of weeks ago I think this is ready so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it I have to be honest I'm a little bit nervous about whether this one is ripe or not. I think that it is. Usually I feel pretty confident when I put on the camera and start cutting open a watermelon, but I'm feeling a little nervous this time. So let's just go ahead and get in here and see what's going on. It's splitting open a little bit, so that's a good sign. It actually looks pretty good. Let's get a look at this. Sorry for all that noise from this foil pan. It smells really good. Something that I find interesting is usually there's this white veining inside of um, watermelon flesh. When you cut it open, you can kind of see it. And this watermelon, it's yellow, just like the outer skin of this watermelon. It's a really pretty variety. Let's see if it tastes any good. I'm going to cut it again this way and somebody's going to tell me that I don't know how to cut watermelons. People tell me that all the time. I don't care guys. I really don't. So I probably should have used a different pan. I feel like I'm going to cut through this one with the knife. Now I'm going to try that. And it tastes pretty good. I think it probably could have stayed on the vine three or four more days and it would have been even better, but it's sweet. It's not as sweet as I would like it to be, but it's pretty sweet. I don't even know how else to explain that.
Here's a nice close-up view. I'm going to call it 95% ripe, but it's pretty good. Um, I think that um, Royal Golden is quite a bit better than this one. And if I was going to pick a golden watermelon to grow, it would be the Royal Golden. I wish that I could find a variety of yellow skinned watermelon that was a little bit more disease resistant. But if you want to try Golden Midget, you might like it. And that's all for this video. I've made a whole series on growing watermelons in containers. There's going to be more videos to come in that series. If you like the video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.